Hello, welcome back to Math Time with Professor Prime, and I am your host as always, Professor Prime. And welcome to my Math in the World series, the series where I talk about different subjects, different fields, different franchises, and just in general different things, and how they all pertain to math and how math is used in said things. And today, I'm tackling something new. Math and football. So here's how I see this going. I'm going to talk about how math is used in the game of football and how it relates to the players in various ways. And then from there, a more meta context. And then that should close things up. So things should flow into one another throughout this. And I think that's a good method of approach for it. So, let's get into it. All right, let's talk about the game of football. So, math is used all throughout it, right? Like, you can't really have football without math. So, let's talk about that. Like, just the way the game is played, right? That's a start. You have two teams, 11 players on each team on the field at that particular time, and your objective is to score as many points as possible. Right off the bat, math is needed. But let's go further. When you're looking at it, right, you have the team on offense, team on the defense. If you're on the offense, right, you're trying to get down that field, you're trying to score that touchdown. You kind of do as much as you can. And as you're going along, right, you have the idea of like downs or plays, right? And it is your job on that offense to get over 10 yards in four downs so you can continue like pressing on. If you don't, you turn over the ball. If you're on a defense, your job is to stop them, <laughs> to stop the offense. And so as you progress, right, you score the uh, points in a couple of different ways, but the main way is to score a touchdown, which is worth six points. And then, once you score a touchdown, like before that ball gets turned over to the other team, you have an opportunity to score more points. The more common way is kicking the ball for an extra point, but you could also run the ball like you would when you're aiming for a touchdown for two extra points instead of one. But that's inherently riskier, and you got a way like the probability of you succeeding with that versus how many points you're getting. So, um, and I, I'm not gonna really get into it in this video, but like, I mean, uh, we talk safeties, that's another thing too. But um, I don't know how many people know about that or not, but if you're a fan of football, yeah, you know more about that than I probably do at the immediate moment. I just like know the basics with that one. But, um, so the other, like big way is you can get a field goal and if you get a field goal that's worth three points right and so when you're on that field if you're a player you have so many things that you are going to have to consider right and chances are you th talked about different plays and like you know different backups with your coaches and assistant coaches and all that but um when you're out there you have to keep that in mind but you also have to be like reactive to what's going on and this is where it gets even more interesting, at least in my mind. Because so you have all stuff that we were talking about before, like, you know, how you're scoring points and all that. And you're in this rectangular field, which is inherently geometric <laughs> and very mathematical. And, you know, you have a certain amount of yards on that field. So, like, as you're, if you're a player, right, you have to consider where you are on that field, how many yards you're um, running. And... You know, you have to consider where you, the other players are and where that ball is. And all of that, right, you have to have a good sense of um, numbers, right? You have to have a good sense of distance. You have to have a good sense of speed. You have to have a good sense of all that. So if you're a football player, right, just when playing the game, you're using a lot of math. And you might not think that because, you know, you're not writing it out with um, a pencil and paper but the truth is like we're all natural mathematicians and if you're a football player 
you're definitely doing a lot of math, right? You're a natural mathematician, like we all are, and you get to use that a lot in your profession, or you know, if you're playing for fun, you get to use that too. And I think that's pretty cool, and it doesn't get like um, talked about much, because we often think of math as something that you know we're doing in school, right? We think of it in an academic sense, and we think that that is it. But what we're doing in that academic sense is we're finding different ways to talk about what we are already doing. And I think that's impressive. So as you're going along and you're on that field, you're doing a lot of math and you're doing a lot of quick math and you have to use a lot of that math in terms of physics. And so you're doing so much in such a short time if you're playing on that field. And if you're a coach, you know, you have a lot to consider. And you're considering, um, in both cases, right? If you're a coach or a player, you're considering, um, you know, everyone on both teams you know you're considering their strengths and all that good stuff and then from there and this is where i think it kind of starts to bleed into that more meta narrative like of football is that so each player right has a record right um and i think that's pretty cool like uh you know they have their stats so to speak so i mean there you go again there's math in that you know, it's like, well, how many points did they score? How many, like, uh, people did they block? Or just how well are they doing in general? And so much more than that, right? Because, you know, you have their height, their weight, and um, a whole lot of other stuff, too. Um, and then how they compare to other people in their league. And, you know, I think if you're playing in it, you're definitely looking at all that stuff. If you're a coach, you're looking at all that stuff. But if you're out here, like... Um, Outside of the game, you're looking at that stuff. And now some people are just looking at it because they're fans and they're curious. And so they're doing that math and they're making those comparisons. And I think that's cool. Um, and then some people take it further because, you know, they might have like a fantasy, oh, sorry, a fantasy football league and they need to have a good number sense there. They need to have a good idea of the stats and what's going on week to week. And if you're gambling, <laughs> you need to have a good understanding of math, right? Because you're definitely using, like, uh, using math and all of that, right? Because you're looking at stats, you're looking at like um, who's going to win and by like how much and all that good stuff. And for the record, if you're watching this at the time of this recording, legal gambling is becoming more of a thing. So when I talk about gambling and math, I'm not necessarily encouraging nefarious behavior. That's on you. But <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're going to do it legal or otherwise, you need to have a good sense of math. And that being said, I think it's interesting because while we're talking about gambling, right? Like the whole point is, you know, to make money or, you know, or at the very least not lose money. And so when we get into the money side, oh my God, you definitely need math there. It's all over the place with it, right? Because like if you're a player, you need to consider how much you're, uh, you know, making. And then like every time you're going out on that field, it's just like, okay, so I'm making this much, you know, and, and I'm, I'm doing this thing. And so, you know, you're out there and you're trying to help your team win and they're trying to keep up your good stats and making sure that, you know, what you're doing uh, corresponds to that money. Cause you know, you're putting your body at risk. You're like, okay, so am I making enough money to be doing that? Um, and then the other thing is, so you're th thinking about how much you're making as you play the game, but it's a lot of football players have been doing over like the years. They're also thinking about those next steps thinking about making investments they're thinking about the business side of it not just okay so i'm getting paid to do something i enjoy it's like well what happens after that right because you have some players who they're going to make it in there and they're going to do what they do for years now you're going to have some other players they're either going to run out of steam or they're going to get an injury or maybe they just don't compare to people like um how they want to or they might just be done and so it's like, well, what do you do with your money? You don't all spend it in one place, right? You invest it. So a lot of players are probably like looking into that. And I know like uh, these days, it seems like a lot of people who have been in um, the profession are looking out for some younger people or, you know, so I've been seeing that more and more where they're like, okay, yeah. So invest your money, make smart investments, make it work for you. And so I think that's pretty cool. And if you like um, your coach, you're definitely thinking about money. If you're an owner of a team, you're thinking about money and is evidenced by like the gambling thing that I mentioned like uh, if you're, you're a fan you're probably thinking of money too and then it gets like more interesting than that too because right like football like uh, is the number one sport in America 
right? And so it makes a lot of money and you got to consider advertisements in all of this too, right? So it's a crazy system and money is just like all over the place with it. And I think that's fascinating. Um, so I don't want this video to be too long. So I want to say a few more things before closing out. Um, I'm going to kind of sum things up and then say something that I find cool. Like, so we talked about the game of football, just like playing it alone. There's a lot of math involved in that because, you know, you have the way that it's played, the amount of people you need to play it, you know, um, you have where you're playing it. You have all different strategies involved while you're playing it. You have the physics behind it. And so, yeah, you need a lot just to play it. And then when you're a player, you know, you're thinking about where you are on that field. You're using that math. You're using that physics. You're thinking about how much money you're making. You might be thinking about the next steps. If you're a coach or an owner, you're thinking about all that sort of stuff, too. You're thinking about, well, okay, so how can we get the best out of this situation? And uh, you're thinking a lot, a lot with that, too. And if you're a fan, like I said, there's a lot to consider, right? Because if you're gambling, you know, money, stats. If you're just like a um, casual or hardcore fan and you're not gambling, you're still going to be thinking about stats most likely so you can discuss that. And there's just a lot, of, a lot of money to be made with it. And that affects our everyday life, you know? And that's something that is worth considering. Math is everywhere. And so even if you don't traditionally think of math and football being linked, math is everywhere and we're all natural mathematicians and you couldn't have football work in terms of playing it, let alone making money off of it, if you didn't have math. And I think that's fascinating. So I will say one more thing to like kind of close this out. Now, I don't know how many of y'all knew this, but like several years ago, there was a football player on like the Ravens, John Urschel. Now, in addition to being a football player, John Urschel is also a mathematician. And that was fascinating. So he was a football player and a mathematician at the same time. Now, he did eventually retire from football so he can focus on pursuing a PhD from MIT in math. But I think it's worth noting that he got the link. He got that you need to be like thoughtful of what's going on there mathematically, you know? And just in general, he got that. Cause that, one of the things that he said, and I don't, I don't think I can remember like the complete quote, but the idea was just, he's, he's talking about how important it is to think quantitatively. And that I got to imagine he's thinking on and off the field and just in general too. So I think that's pretty cool to kind of close this out that, hey, there was a mathematician who was also a football player, or if you prefer a football player who was also a mathematician, either way. And he tried to balance both of those worlds, and I think that's pretty cool. And yeah, I imagine he's still out there doing great things. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you think about math in a somewhat different way, and maybe even football too. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Professor Prime out.